On this installment of Creative Cabin Fever, I get to talk to Connor Doyle. Now, Connor is about to release his first. His first, The Beggar, is coming out on Friday, and we are super excited down in these parts to see what the man can do and what the man can create. So, Connor, good morning. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Very well. Um. Yeah, no, I'm I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing. This is my first single which is a real surreal feeling to to have created and now it's uh, about to come out and oh, it's 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 going to be wild it is going to be wild i'm really excited thank you but like before we get to that before we get to the i'm releasing a thing now let's, mm-hmm. let's go back let's go back in conor doyle history so like okay. What was the first song you fell in love with? What was your gateway drug into the rock and roll music industry? My first, my first, oh, that's a great question. My first kind of song that I fell in love with. Um, I suppose I, I always loved Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash was the kind of gateway to the kind of style of music that I wanted to play. Um, and then it kind of fell into the likes of Bob Dylan and all these blues and folk artists. Um, so I think that kind of style was kind of the gateway. Um, my first ever CD, though, was uh, was like Sean Kingston. Um, that wasn't my first CD, but the kind of gateway was was like Johnny Cash. You know, that's a good gateway. Yeah. I, I could, a lot of people, you know. Mm. And then Johnny Cash ended up being a gateway to others, to Nine Inch Nails, for instance. Oh, so, yeah. like, that's an interesting interlude, you know? Yeah. Just loops, you know? Uh, <laughs> no. Um, so I suppose, I suppose I kind of, I started playing about five years ago. That's when, that's when, like, all of this mad stuff happened. And then, and then four years ago, I started actually writing music, uh, writing lyrics. So I must have been about fifteen or sixteen, and then, um, and it kind of grew from there. I started going out busking. I started to, you know, get to know people and just, and just making lots of friends through music, which is which is a nice, nice feeling. Um, now I'm at this stage, um, and if you told me maybe five years ago that. I'd have a single out. I would, I'd, I'd go, nah. I'd, I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah, well, I've watched you busk for years. So I have seen you in the streets and I have seen you grow as an artist and performer from the streets to a, a stage in a garden. You know what I mean? Mm. And there has been some incredible progression. Like, I think anyone who watches you now and doesn't go, that man works really, really hard on his craft is a dope. Right, because wow. you're actually so driven and passionate about what you do. I'm just blown away that Thank you've you. come that far in such mm. a short space of time, personally. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. So yeah. yeah, I believe that you're about to launch a, a single. Like, I mean, it's obviously happening. Mm. <laughs> it, it's, happen- it's happening. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be so like, I'm going to be so excited, but I'm also going to be so just like nervous. I think, and I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be wild, but I'm getting so many messages of support and people coming up to me and saying, oh, man, can't wait for the 13th. Can't wait for the beggar to come out and stuff like this. Um, And it's a lovely, lovely feeling when people, you know, just kind of embrace what you're about to do um, and and support it. So it's, it's, it's a lovely, it's a lovely, lovely thing. Yeah, like it's it's amazing that anyone is releasing anything in this moment in time. But for our first single to come out, that's even just more special. Yeah. And, and for it to be a single of someone that I've actually had the privilege of watching grow. Yeah. It's a little bit more special. A little bit more special. I, I really hope you enjoy it. Um, I think it's I think it's something that a lot of people will like. Um, it's very it's very upbeat. I'll say that much. So it is. But that's what I wanted to ask was um when was when was the first time that you saw me busk? Jeez, it's a good while ago now. 
good while ago now. Mm. I don't mm. even think I was back in the game. No? You yeah. were just kind of out and about. Just... I was just strolling through the town. Just... And then the steward is just singing. Yeah, but I kind of stalk like uh, buskers. I think that makes sense. That it makes does sense. make sense. It was really cool. One time I saw a new buskers. Mm. And I followed them. I thought I was being <laughs> really low key, right? <laughs> I followed them and I sat down on a bench across from them. Mm. I was like, what are you doing in my kingdom? I don't know your faces. Mm. And then one of them ran up to me with a CD and he was like, you're that girl from the interviews. And I was like, oh. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's, that, that's when you know you're at a level. When people walk up to, walk up to you and go, you're the girl from the, inter- uh, the interviews. I I find this moment in time very difficult, Connor, because mm, mm. I literally just talk to people, okay? I am yeah. nothing special. I just talk to people. So. I'm, you know what? I feel that. I'm the same. It's a weird time having to be like, stuck inside and not get to kind of get to just roam around in your little bubble, kind of just talk to people. Yeah. So... My good gig memories, because I think we're all missing gigs right now, right? So do you have any top three gigs that you remember have top bad gigs? There's a, there's, there has been a few. There has been a few um, interesting gigs. Um, Even ones, bands that you really admire that you went to see, like, I just want to get, I just don't want to forget gigs. <laughs> no, I <laughs> I feel that on such a level. It's just, you, you're trying to keep whatever memory of gigs fresh in the mind that you can. Um, I suppose locally, when I, um, I, I went when I went to see Lithium Lounge, when I when I saw them play in Central Arts, uh, that was that was a fantastic gig. Um, a great band as well. Um, but I suppose on a kind of more spectacular level. Um, the best gig that I think I went to is the Rolling Stones. That was a that was that was a wild gig. Um, it was seventy thousand people there, but because it's the Rolling Stones, most of the crowd were older. They were more of an older crowd, so it wasn't like so much. There's you know a load of phones and stuff. Uh, it was just people embracing the music and a lot of people just you know singing along and having a good time for what it was which was a really nice feeling because i'm i'm a very i'm very into that like kind of just taking a few pictures and then just just living in the the vibrations of the of the music rather than true screen so i think the rolling stones was a really really i suppose important concert to me just the experience amazing i've never seen the stones live I've, I've i've been to quite a few gigs and funnily enough the first song i fell in love with was painted black by the rolling stones mm. so that's a good yeah i love that feeling at a gig you're right mm. like that 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 musical immersion mm. um it is very hard to not be in a sea of phones mm. i leave everybody when i go to a gig mm. oh you're like, you're a kind of wanderer yeah no no no. I go with my friends and I say, mm. this is going to be wonderful. I can't wait to talk to you about it afterwards. Ah. And I'm gone. Just like that. Because I can't concentrate fully on, on a gig. Mm. Everything about a gig is work, right? So for mm. years, this has been a problem. And I'd gotten to the point where I was burnt out from gigs, right? So mm. I was like, no, now I'm going to go for enjoyment once every five weeks. But I used to, but can't really right now. And I would just go and feel a gig. Yeah. As opposed to where I could gig or talk to anyone. I just, just do my own thing. Just feel it. Turn my phone off. Mm. Take a few pictures if it's a work thing or like, mm. but mostly. And then go back and meet the lads and talk about it properly instead of having them go, do you see what they're doing with the lights there? <laughs> I want to put that sound level that way. Oh. Yeah. You can just imagine you at like a festival, just like annoying the sound guy, just being like, so like, hey, do you think you I want to bring those lights up a bit? And he's just like there, like, oh. So, so we just immerse ourselves in music on nights off. 
I think I think it's a lovely thing to be able to do. And I think now more than ever, people are immersing themselves in music as well, which is a wonderful thing. We might not be able to play music live, um, but there's there's more people listening to music more than ever now, which I think is lovely. It's incredible. So like, that's one of the questions, actually. I call it rediscovering music for the first time. Has there been any old hits that you're starting to listen to for the first time, even though you've heard them a thousand million times? Oh, some old hits. Yeah. Uh, one of them, hold on. Oh, yeah, you you just get comfy, man. Yeah, just get comfy. Um, I have my throne, you know, so I, I'm good. That's 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 pretty cool. I've been listening to a bit of Mamas and Papas. Oh. Um, uh, what else have I been listening to? Um, some old stuff. You know, I've been listening to some Mamas and Papas. And I've been listening to this band called Mandolin Orange. They're very, very cool. Very, very cool folk band, uh, folk duo. I've been listening to them a lot. What about yourself? What have you been kind of going back over but all I do is listen to music so Mm. I have this whole concept that I usually play around with a lot and you can find it on my Spotify and it's that we all have a soundtrack to our life Mm. so whenever I need like junk for my soul I'll just go into my soundtrack to my life and I'll just remember all the past chapters or pages or people that's cool it's it's kind of crazy how music can you know, it it attaches you to a moment in time. That I think that's one of the most magical things about music. You know, when you go to a gig and you know you have your favorite song that you listen to, and then you see it live, and then when you listen to it again, you're you're brought straight back to that moment in a gig. It's such a surreal feeling. Um, I think music is the, the closest thing to actual magic that. There is. It's a lovely, it's a lovely thing. Um, if you think about us as human beings, right? So when we were in our mom's belly, the first thing we heard was the wish of water and the sound of our heartbeat. That's all that's, we knew. That's mad. Right? Mm. So it's completely normal that sound would have such a transcendent feeling for human beings because mm. it's the first memory you have. Mm. So then the next memory you get is smell. And that's why smells bring you back so much. Because the first mm. thing you'll do is smell your mom's skin when you're on the outside. Mm. And then that's kind of like how our senses bring us back to memories. And I think it's magical. That, that's, it, it, it really is a, a crazy thing. Um, and I, I kind of, I, I hope that when people listen to the single, then they'll be able to hear it. And then they go, oh yeah, that, that song. Um, you know, it just becomes somebody else's. Like it becomes yours. It becomes to do to do whatever you want and however you listen to it, which I think would be really cool. I think that's the cool side to it. I agree. I can't wait. So, how does one go from busking in an arch down by a church to actually producing and creating a thing with a group of people? Talk to me about the process of the beggar. So, I wrote this song about. It must have been about a year ago now. Um, and I want, I knew for the first song, I knew for the, the single, um, that it ever was going to produce that it had to be something that I really, really believed in. Um, and I, and I just wanted, I wanted it to be a mixture of things. I wanted it to be, you know, everything I wanted to believe in, but also I wanted it to be fun to play. And, you know, so I wrote this song and it basically kind of summed up like everything that I wanted to say um, as an artist in one song. And, and I keep going back to, um, you know, the film Walk the Line. Uh, there's a scene where Sam Phillips, Johnny Cash's producer, uh, he, he says to them, you know, if you have one song that you were going to give to people and one song only that kind of, sums you up what would it be um and i feel like i feel like the beggar is is kind of that for me it's um it's kind of me saying 
you know, it's it's a basically one big screw you of a song to people that say, you know, the whole when are you gonna get a real job type of thing. Um you know, the whole when are you gonna get a real job? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna make this work type of thing? So this song is a mixture of that, it's a mixture of experiences, but it's also if not anything, an anthem in celebration of just playing music for the sake of playing music, you know. So I think that's the, I think that's the kind of best part about it. It's it's a celebration of you know, not just you know career career career. It's just like you know this is music and just being present and being being able to play and just the joy of the art and the joy of music. I think that's what I'm obsessed with at the moment. Yeah, and it's a perfect time to bring out a song like that. Yeah, I think I think everybody kind of needs something like that. Um, so I think it'd be cool. It's it's nice to see people bus or uh, not see people busking. Uh, it's, yes. it's it's nice to see people um, enjoying music, uh, and people have been so supportive over the last last couple of weeks with the run up and to it. Uh, so it's, it's crazy. It's, it's a crazy, crazy time. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be unreal. It's going to be unreal. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's why we're doing this. Cause we're so mm. excited. Like I'm so excited. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's so cool. So uh, I suppose going from busking to recording, um, I suppose it was a long time coming. I recorded with two of my, to my close friends, um, Alan O'Brien, Caleb Crean, um, Alan done the, the drums and the bass on the song, and then Caleb produced the song and, and you know made it sound good. So we we went to college together in 2017, doing sound production, um, and I suppose it, you know, it seemed right that we ended up, you know, all together working on this song. Um, because I kind of ran the idea to them, you know, uh, I'm working on a single. They're like, man, we, you know, we can do it. Um, so we all just kind of came together and we kind of, you know, we done the recording, we recorded out Caleb's, recorded out Alan's. Um, and then by the end of it, it, it became, you know, better than, I ever thought it would be which is which is what you want really uh, and much credit much credit to Caleb and both Alan for for doing that they're just as important um on the track as me myself singing it so so much credit to them as well yeah those boys would be doing all sorts around the scene yeah yeah no they're they're busy out they're they're busy out and it's great as well that you get to do it with like people that you're so close with. I think that's wonderful. It probably adds to the magic and depth of the body of work. It does because um because no matter where the song goes, we can we can always say, you know, we're we're proud of that. Um and that we've done that kind of together, which is a cool thing. And I I'm kind of reading this book about, you know, the kind of music side of music industry side of stuff. Um, and I said, like, it doesn't matter where you get a song recorded. Like at the end of the day, it's the sound, it's the music that, you know, that makes it. So it doesn't matter what kind of studio you do it in, as long as the, as long as the sound is there, as long as the song is there, that's the most important bit. I agree completely. I actually had this conversation with one of my heroes last week. Shit Kid agreed to do an interview with me. Mm. She records everything from a bunk bed or her car. That's crazy. She's amazing. Mm. So um, that was her thing. She was like, the car is perfect. Like, it's basically a sound booth. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I know. Mm. Imagine yeah, recording, recording your It's just track. her vocals. She yeah. from a car. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. The cars have some great vocals. Yeah, she's cool. So yeah, I'd be the same as you. Like I also find like a lot of bands that I admire live, 
Mm. When they've gone to a studio and over polished it, it loses its magic. Yeah, you need, I think there's, <clears throat> there's a certain element of rawness that, you know, where do you get the balance between the rawness of the song and the kind of magic of the song? Um, and this is something that we definitely talked about is that we didn't want it to be, we didn't really want it to be polished um, or squeaky clean or kind of pop sounded. It just um, kind of just wanted it to be my own sound or our own sound that, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to be blown away. I know that much, so yeah. I'm excited. I think, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's going to be crazy. Um, no, it's cool. Oh, because I think we were saying along the lines. I remember having this conversation with Caleb the other day. We we're saying along the lines of like you go to like maybe a really big studio and it's, you know maybe however much for the day, maybe seven hundred or whatever you're paying. Most of that day is getting used, um, getting to know the sound engineers and the people that you're doing everything with and then romancing the crew romancing the crew and then you know and you're trying not to think about you know the money that's taken away so I think it's kind of nice in the fact that you know we had this musical chemistry already there um and it was very kind of cost effective as well like we just it was it wasn't you know paying for a studio it was just three friends in the studio making music which I think is a lovely thing. It is it gives it a completely different flair and level. Now you touched upon going obviously to college with the boys and I know that you're still doing music. <laughs> I'm still doing music so I, I went to I went to WCFE 2017 and there I got on sound engineering and music technology and after my travels this year I came back and then I just applied for college. I said, you know what, I want to go to BIM. And kind of, it was near, it was kind of a last minute thing because I just came back and I was like, you know what, they're, they're still taking people. They're still taking people in. So I applied, um, I think at this stage, the, the applications were online. They you had to do an audition through YouTube. So I sent my audition on, on YouTube uh, and they accepted me, which is, and it's been, yeah, it's been so good. It's been so good ever since. So now I'm doing a diploma in songwriting or professional musicianship, which is nice. It's a lovely course as well. Yeah, and it's a great school. Mm, it's, it, it, it's lovely. It's cool. Would you recommend doing sound engineering um, in I would, you know what, I would. The sound engineering course in CTI is a lovely, lovely course. A uh, lovely course to do if somebody's, you know, trying to get into the production side of things. Um, and that kind of aspect definitely gave me a hand uh, when it came to uh, the kind of production side of things with Caleb. You know, he'd send out tracks and then I'd be like, you know what, maybe if we do this, maybe if we so-and-so. Um, so definitely going to CTI kind of gave me that, you know, kind of experience or training on the production side, which has been cool. Great. Like we all need our different foundations. Like if we were to go through my CV, like your, your brain would just explode. Just, just explode. Too much. Yeah. Like, who even needs to know that many things? Mm. You know, I'm like one of those like masters of none. Masters of none, but jack of all all the trades all I think the, the trades. only thing I haven't done is worked in a bar yeah is that something you want to take off yeah then yeah. you could I mean if you were to think about it in like a, a non-normal way I guess I have worked in bars doing events <laughs> so we don't even have to worry about me being a bar woman no <laughs> that's very true yeah, no, I think it's really important to try everything that even just niggles a fancy at you. The reason I yeah. was asking is because a few people were like, you should go back and do that course and become a sound engineer. And I was like, mm. yeah, I think I'm okay. Maybe like yeah. when I'm 50? When <laughs> I'm 50. As a mature student. 
you know. Yeah, that's amazing that you've gone like and done all that with the boys, and now on Friday it's about to come out. It's about to. It's it's almost like this kind of amalgamation of of everything, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's um there's this really lovely memory I have of one of the first times I played the beggar. Um, I was downstairs and my mom, my mom was in the kitchen. Uh, she was making scrambled eggs or whatever. You know, and she was there, she's cooking for me. I was like, all right, cool. So I was playing the chords to the song, you know, playing away. And I wasn't paying no attention. I was looking out the window. I was, you know, singing the song, enjoying it. So then I, I, I look back and she has stopped making scrambled eggs. And she's now dancing around the kitchen to the song. Um, and I thought that was a very lovely thing. And I've got a similar reaction from friends as well. Um, so I think that's, that's a nicer memory of, of uh, the kind of the birth of the song. And now it's kind of come to it's kind of fruition and it's kind of it's going to be out, which is going to be going to be amazing. So, like, yeah, I just that's amazing. Like, I can't wait to be a mom dancing in the kitchen to whatever came on the creative <laughs> day. Do you know what I mean? I think uh, I, I imagine that would be a surreal feeling. Yeah. Did you say he'd be a drummer? You say he definitely, he'd definitely be a drummer. Definitely be a drummer, but he wants to be a singing drummer, and he really likes the guitar as well, and he loves yeah. the piano. I have a funny feeling the he's piano, going to be yeah. A, yeah. yeah. I have a funny feeling he's going to be a multi instrumentalist if I push him hard enough. And when mm. I say push, I mean guide. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to be one of those like. Hey. Just like you have to you gotta yeah, do your point though because if he says i want to do drumming and i invest money in him he's not gonna be able to just quit like yeah <laughs> you, know? That's, you know that's fair enough it's like when um it's like when parents buy their children like these really expensive guitars and then they just go eh, nah you know don't want it yeah start then, low end with your kids because you just uh, don't know you, you just know. don't yeah you just don't know you know, kids can just go from like one thing to another, so it's it's, it's best off. You know, I'm still like that, so I could understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just go from one thing to the other. You know, yeah. We have this steel tongue drum at home, and he loves playing that. And he does have like wooden drums with real drumsticks and stuff. Like mm. my friend Cormac's an incredible drummer, so he gave him his first set of real drumsticks. Yeah. Cormac's actually in the same course. Yeah, yeah it's, that's cool. That's cool. Me and very... Cormac were in a punk band when we were like kids. That's class. He that's... recently found our recording. No way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah, should... we have think... to meet up at the weekend and listen yeah, to the listen. Spilt Milk album together. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should definitely uh, release it. Just... <laughs> no. Um, I still find it hard to believe that that part of my life ever even happened. You know, mm. back then I was practicing in Ruby Studios, so I wasn't even like working or yeah. with any like intention of ever ending up working with Alex Jones. Never mind that I would eventually have my own thing. Going. Yeah, it's, it's crazy times. I suppose how is how is your twenty twenty been so far? Great. Great. But difficult. Like yeah, it's. It's what you make of it, you know? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, like, it's completely not what I had um, envisaged. Yeah, I think it's, it's a lot of people. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people. It's, everybody had their own plans of what 2020 was going to be like. I remember, like, New Year's Eve and everybody on 2020 is going to be the year. And, <laughs> and it just wasn't. Yeah, I was up bad, dropped out twice with a few friends of mine from, from the industry. Like, I'd been mm. invited as a promoter to meet loads of bands up there, and I was having a great time. And I was there with, like, just really good friends of mine from years mm. ago that I hadn't had chance to see. And I was outside, dropped out twice, celebrating 2020. I was like, this year is going to be really special. Yeah. I wasn't wrong. You weren't, you weren't wrong. 
it, it has been special. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. What a, what a year. I suppose it is it is what you make of it. Um, which has been crazy. I've done a lot of traveling in the early stage of 2020. And I, that's something that I planned for a while. And I, I never thought that I would have done. It's quite a crazy thing um, to be able to just kind of solo travel. But it's a, it's a cool, it's a cool feeling. Um, then getting stuck abroad is another thing because of the pandemic. Yeah. I remember you were messaging me and you're like, when I get back. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. If you get back. <laughs> I had a few friends dog traveling, like, mm. um, wide and far, like, I had mm. one friend stuck in South America for a while. Like. No way. Yeah. I said that's wild. Yeah, she had a great time. But <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, don't get me wrong, I had, a, I had an amazing time. If I was going to be stuck anywhere, um, Austria was the place, you know. Yeah, uh, it's so beautiful there, isn't it? Mm, it's such a nice country. And the people are so friendly as well. That's what, that's what I found. Everybody that I met there um, was so welcoming, um, so friendly. You could just chat to anybody on the street and then just chat away to you. You know the way in some places there's kind of awkwardness of like, you know, you do your own thing, you just kind of head down. But I think more so in Central Europe, they're more open to conversation a little bit more yeah i guess that's where i get my quirkiness from because yeah. i obviously grew up in, in Switzerland. Switzerland. yeah <laughs> so yeah i talk to anyone mm. but i love that about Tremor actually mm. because it's still kind of small towny like mm. so you can actually talk to anybody and they'll just chat away it's amazing yeah whereas in town sometimes i feel like well i'll still do it because it's mm. just my soul right but people will be like what is this one on kindness yeah kindness yeah just gonna <laughs> what are you on yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i love that i do miss that about switzerland and france like i miss the food as well oh man i think if i if i lived in france uh, i'd be so fat i'd be so fat just with just with the pastries uh and cheese I don't know how everybody is not. Just but a, Loco but. have two French chefs at the moment and they're doing these pastry boxes and um, they're pretty much as close as you're going to get to the French thing delivered to your house. I'll be telling you that now. I'm going to I'm going to send you a list of all the nice pastry places <laughs> in the water for Because that's all I do lately is eat yeah. pastries in the bath. Yeah. And, oh, that's, that's a great place to eat pastries uh, as any. <laughs> And just next time you see me busking, I'm just going to be just this ball just <laughs> ro just rolling around town. <laughs> and you're going to be like, ah, oh, I did that. I sent him, sent him to too many food places. And now sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. But yeah, I think it's amazing that you've traveled. It's a great way to grow your craft. It's mm. also a great way to grow as a person. You need to experience different people to oh, understand. Do. do you yeah. know what I mean? You need to see mm. the world through other people's you eyes. You need, need to, to fuck. You need to have different perspectives. You need to just, it just, it does just open your eyes and just kind of, uh, I remember being on the plane to Switzerland. I'm being, you know, I was on the plane. I was like, holy fuck, I'm actually doing this. You know, I had, had one of those kind of moments. I was like, fuck. And then part of me was thinking, like, is my guitar okay? Because I had thrown it underneath the, the, the plane. So I was like, part of me is like, holy fuck, this is class. This is amazing. And then the other side of me was like, I really hope my guitar is not broken. It yeah. was fine. Yeah, it was fine. It worked out. It worked out. Yeah. I've always traveled on my own. Like, because, you know, when I was younger, I think the age where you could start traveling on your own was like eight or nine. Mm. So my parents lived in France and Switzerland and I would come home to my granny every summer. Mm. So like my parents couldn't just fly over with me and fly back with me. Yeah. That would be crazy. Mm. So like I used to have this little pass and I'd go on the plane by myself. Oh, nice. Yeah. Just kind of walking past everybody like, oh, I'm traveling. 
Yeah. So as a kid, I was really brave and would travel by myself. And then something happened. I didn't even like taking buses on my own anymore. Oh, yeah. Yay. But then in the last year, I just took loads of buses by myself and I loved it. Yeah. Just said, you know what? I'm going to just bus around. Yeah. yeah. It's weird the things like you allow yourself to take on as fears and stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, you have these kind of ideas in your head. And then it's whether you kind of, I suppose, go through with them or not. Like I've been planning before I went, before I went abroad, I was kind of just planning because it was like, it was before 2020. So I was like, you know what, 2020, start of a new decade. I want to, you know, I want to travel around and I want to um, just, you know, busk and meet people and, and just see where it goes, I suppose. Um, and then I just kind of finally said, I started out with Ireland first. I started out uh, traveling around the country, uh, in January. And that was amazing. Met some amazing people just hopping from hostels to hostel, um, and then coming back around. And that was really fun. And then once I, once I was busking and I was able to live off to that, I kind of thought, hold on a second, there's, there's something here, you know, if I, if I was able to do this, you know, going around the country, I thought, no, oh, maybe this is possible. Amazing. Yeah, so it's just about taking the leap. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. It's just if we just get leap. over that thing that's telling us not to do it and just do it. Yeah. That's the, that's the crazy thing. It's just, you know, just actually jumping at it and going, you know, just leaping into it and saying, you know what, whatever happens will be experience. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. I know you're about to release a single, like yeah. in two days. In two days time. <laughs> just crazy. Just been a whole year of just madness. Just complete and utter madness. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But my first single. That's gonna be, it's gonna be wild. So it is. I, 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 I think people, I think people enjoy it. So it's gonna be the. Everybody's excited for it. So, um, I'm excited for it. You know, I, I try when I'm when I'm kind of doing the producing side of music. Um, when I'm kind of listening, I try and listen as if I'm a listener and not the artist themselves. I think it's an important thing to do as well. Um, I try it and just, you know, but just as a listener, I kept, you know, going back and, and like, yeah, just listening away. Like it's um, so I try it from from an unbiased view possible. Uh, yeah, which is a hard thing to do. Like I'm yeah. over critical, for instance, anytime. Like I always rewatch my interviews. I have to. Yeah. Um, and it's not from a sense of, oh, look at me on screen. No, it's like, where can I do better? Okay. What did I forget to ask? Mm -hmm. Oh, crap. And then I have to find out the information in there to make sure that whatever I'm sharing, you know, the stuff. But yeah, I'm really critical. I think it's really hard to do that in a non-biased way because I'm really tough on myself, like really mm. tough on myself. I'm really easy on everyone else, but I'm really tough on myself. Like. Yeah, I think that's the the curse of the artist or the curse of, you know, uh, being in any sort of medium or whatever you want to do or whatever you're passionate about is that you know people might go I remember playing um, I remember playing a gig before and everybody was coming up to me and they were saying oh, that was that was such a good set that was like, so good whatever uh, but in my head I was like oh, I made so many mistakes I wasn't I wasn't feeling it like it just didn't you know it just didn't feel like it was a good gig but to other people did so you know so i suppose in the arts we're kind of self-critical that way you know whereas once you just put it up then it's up there like there's nothing yeah, you that's can do it. about it yeah yeah just put it up just let it happen you know? yeah but i suppose it, it is a healthy thing to want to push yourself to be better so you know mm. <laughs> is it I suppose it's better than, you know, staying around the same area, you know. 
Yeah, no, yeah. look, I do, I do be pushing it a little bit hard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You'd just be rewatching this like over and. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> You should just you should just start recording clips of you reviewing work and just being like, "What am I doing?" I could do my own version of Goggle Box where I rewatch myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a bit. That's a million dollar. Idea. That's a million euro idea if I ever heard one. Just Rebecca. Hey, the idea is I'm the, not sure of Connor. Yeah, the, the time to actually do them. To actually do them. <laughs> The ideas they're spewing out is just everything's out there. It's just it's when to do them. Yeah, a goggle box, but just you reviewing work. I think that'd be amazing. I'd watch that. <laughs> People would probably watch that over the actual interview itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like never mind the interview. Go to the bloopers. Go to go to her watching uh, watching over it. Sorry, I got distracted. There's actually a bin rolling down my road by itself because the wind is so strong <laughs> i have never seen anything like that before in my life like an actual bin just went <laughs> <laughs> just like tumbleweeds like this <laughs> tumble bin yeah just tumble bin just just bobbing along that's that's kind of comical yeah <laughs> i mean i don't think you're going to get much better than that. i should have taken the camera <laughs> I just <laughs> it wasn't your bin was it? no it wasn't no oh it wasn't my bin imagine my neighbor's bin i'm gonna go put it back where it was in a minute yeah uh... <laughs> connor thank you so much for the interview today you're so and welcome the... no the bin's not going there anymore it's not going there no. thank you so much for interviewing me this has been um i've seen you do your craft i've seen you do your thing you're doing you're doing such a good job um you're you're you know shining this light on the kind of waterford scene so thank you very much for uh asking me to be to do this interview um but like it's a good story like so the other day i was on a bus to a location unknown top secret location mm -hmm. and you're like two seats ahead of me and my boyfriend is oh yeah behind you and mm -hmm. then I'm behind him again and all three of us have our headphones on and none of us really notice like who else is there because like that's a rule like me and James like no bus isn't music time James like mm. so like put our headphones on and we're all bopping away. away three of us are in three yeah. different seats all of us oh, just away, away. Like, losing our stuff and then I, I saw it was you I was like oh my god I'm so sorry I didn't even know it was you yeah Can I do an interview <laughs> and you were like, yeah okay yeah sure <laughs> So yeah, Rebecca Cappuccini grabs interviews from buses. From people on the bus, from artists on the bus. <laughs> I think there was that one point that me and him were uh, just bopping in sync. In like, unison. Yeah, just both our heads. Like, like we were definitely listening to like completely different music. Oh, definitely. But, yeah, but just the fact that we we're in sync. I yeah, thought that Connor was... Connor James. Just bopping away. Socks the headphones. Yeah. I, I I thought that was I thought that was brilliant. It was. It was so cool. I love when stuff like that happens. So when the universe just throws you a bone, you're like, well, actually, I do have this day free this week. Would you like to do it? Because I think you're important. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I was I was I was more than happy. I said, you know, hell yeah. Um. But it's um it's been a joy. It's been a joy chatting to you, um and your eccentric self as always and um. I can't wait. One of a kind. One of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I can't wait for for the beggar to be finally released on Friday, which is gonna be crazy. It's gonna be mad. Yeah, I can't wait. I would urge anyone out there to go and pre-save it, and if not, I'll be like bombarding your socials with it on Friday, no doubt. Nice, nice. Thank you, Connor. You're welcome. <laughs>